Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out the emulation performance of the all new AMD Ryzen 7 5700G APU. Recently, I put the super small form factor PC together around the 5700G, and for PC gaming, it actually performs really well. I did overclock the GPU, and if you're interested in checking out the build and PC game performance, I will leave a link for that video in the description. But this video is strictly going to be dedicated to emulation. We're going to go through some PSP, some Wii, some GameCube, some Wii U, some Switch, some Xbox, Xbox 360. We're going to tackle all the high-end stuff with this new APU and see what it can really do. But before we jump right into it, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the basic specs here. For the CPU or the APU, we have that Ryzen 7 5700G. We do have built-in Radeon 8 graphics. I went with 16 gigabytes of DDR4, a one terabyte NVMe drive. This is a super small 3.3 liter case and it does come with a 150 watt power supply and we're going to be running Windows 10 Pro. And like I mentioned, if you're interested in checking out the full build, link for that video is in the description. But let's go ahead and jump into Windows. All right, so here it is. I'm running Windows 10 Pro. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 5700G, eight cores, 16 threads with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost up to 4.6. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4,000 megahertz and the built-in Radeon 8 graphics. But with this one here, I am overclocked to 2,300 megahertz from 2,000. So we do have a bit of an overclock on that GPU. I've got a lot of stuff to test here, but some stuff that you won't see in this video is like Dreamcast and N64. When it comes to that lower end stuff, this is going to run it just fine. Even if you want to upscale to 1080p, 2K, 4K, we have more than enough CPU and GPU power to run those emulators at full speed. We will start off light here, and the first one we're going to jump right into is PSP. So here we are with the standalone version of PPSSPP. We're at 5x resolution using the Vulcan backend with one of the harder ones to run, which is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. With each one of these emulators, you will see the name of the system, the name of the emulator, if I'm upscaled or not. I'll also have the backend listed down in the lower left hand corner. We have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner and the name of the game on screen at any given time so you know what's going on with this system. Next on the list, we have Sega Saturn using RetroArch with the Beetle Core. If you want to use Yoba San Shiro, you'll have no issues with it. I just personally like the Beetle Core here, and we're running at full speed, so Sega Saturn emulation isn't an issue on this machine either. And just because I was already here in RetroArch, I figured I'd show you your boss and Shiro upscaled to 1080p. We have Sega Rally running here, and it definitely makes a big difference. I also wanted to test out a little bit of upscaled PS1 emulation using Swan Station, formerly known as Duck Station inside a Retro Arch. You could also use the standalone version if you want to. But here we have Colin McRae Rally 2.0 upscaled to 4K. And personally, I love upscaling these racing games on PlayStation 1. Some games upscale better than others, but I find that most racing games do a great job. Moving over to 3DS using Citra, in the past I've actually had a lot of issues running Citra on these Ryzen APUs, mainly because of the OpenGL performance, but with this one here it seems to be working a lot better even than the 4000 series APUs. We're at 3x resolution, now this doesn't mean that every single 3DS game is going to run at 3x, you will have to drop some of them down, but we're getting decent performance here with Citra. Next on the list, we have PS2 using PCSX2. We're upscaled to 2K using the DirectX 11 backend. Uh, like I mentioned with Citra, OpenGL really isn't great on these. I did test it here. We can run these at 720p with OpenGL, but if you want to upscale to 2K and maybe even higher with some games, go with the DirectX 11 backend. But when it comes to PS2 emulation on these new 5000 series APUs, it does an amazing job.
When it comes to the Dolphin emulator, it's gotten a lot easier to emulate in the last few years, be it GameCube or Wii, and uh, with this system here, you're not going to have any issues pushing even some of the harder to run games at 4K using the Vulcan back in. And this goes for GameCube, like you're seeing running here, and even Wii games. And real quick, here we have a Wii game using the same Dolphin emulator, upscaled to 4K, Vulcan back in. Really great performance. Ever since AMD released the 4000 series APUs, we've been able to do PS3 pretty well. Here it is using RPCS3 and we're even upscaled to 1080p using that Vulcan back in. Here we have Tekken 6 and this one's a little easier to emulate. Now if we take a look at the CPU usage, we're sitting around 25 up to 25% and the wattage on the CPU package power is around 52 to 54 watts. But there are some PS3 games that really take advantage of those extra threads like Skate 3 and uh, we're going to see that jump up dramatically. So instead of pulling 50 to 55 watts, we're around 80 watts here with this game and that's really because it loves those extra threads and we have plenty of them. But as you can see, we're still upscaled to 1080p using that Vulcan back end and it's running Skate 3 at 60. textures here. I tested three different games and basically it's the same thing through all of them. So I'm going to chalk it up to the latest AMD drivers not being compatible with this emulator. And finally here we have Zinnia, the Xbox 360 emulator. We should be running this at 60, but uh, it really does favor NVIDIA GPUs or just dedicated GPUs in general. There's no doubt that this 5700G has more than enough CPU power to run this emulator. But as it sits right now with the latest versions of Xenia, it just doesn't like these built-in Radeon graphics. So yeah, the 5700G performs absolutely amazing with emulation, and it's only going to get better with the 6000 series and the 7000 series. I mean, there's rumor right now that the 6000 series APUs from AMD will feature RDNA 2 instead of Vega graphics. So that's really going to help out, especially with those emulators that favor higher end graphics. And it's really just going to allow us to upscale more with the stuff that we're running right now at full speed. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out some PC games running on the 5700G, definitely check out the first video I made on this little build. And if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave a few links in the description. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this little build, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.